If you are interested in learning more about TB screening of healthcare personnel in Arizona, then this is the webinar for you. My name is Sherry Stafford. I am the TB nurse coordinator for Arizona Department of Health Services. Our general TB email is also listed on this first page. Always feel free to reach out to us if you have any TB questions. We're going to be covering some frequently asked questions in the next couple of slides. It's going to be about the TB screening requirements for healthcare institutions licensed by the state of Arizona. Note that this only refers to people, to institutions licensed with, by the state of Arizona, and there may be some differences if you're a licensed by a different entity. But where can you find TB screening requirements for healthcare institutions? It's in the Arizona Administrative Code R9-10-113. This covers what the TB screening requirements for healthcare institutions licensed by the state of Arizona are. Note that this was passed, the updates were passed on May 4th, uh, 2022, but it does take some time to incorporate changes um, onto the internet copy of the Arizona Administrative Code. Until those are integrated, you may need to go to a different website to see how it is written. You're going to refer to individual articles based on your type of healthcare license to see who is required to have TB screening at your healthcare institution. I'm gonna be covering that in the next slide on table one. So you can kind of see that's a nice little table, a reference table for, to make it a little bit more easy for you. So who needs to be part of TB screening within your institution? So here is an example of the table. This is not the complete table, otherwise you'd not be able to read it. The complete table is available in a reference packet on our website, and uh, it is labeled table one, and it covers who should be screened by the type of healthcare facility license or healthcare institution license. We reference uh, the article and also the specific wording that is relevant within that article. What resources are available to help implement TB screening? There are three main ones. Of course, it's the 2019 MMWR that uh, helped to uh, drive these changes, basically going away from the annual TB testing. The 2020 Companion Guide helps, elaborates on how to implement these recommendations. And then the 2005 guide is, guideline is still useful because it, it's a couple hundred pages long, versus only a few pages on both of the um, upper two resources. What are the essential steps for TB control in healthcare settings? First of all, there's baseline TB screening, followed by baseline TB testing. On an annual basis, TB testing is no longer recommended in the general setting. It is recommended, however, to have annual screening of untreated LTBI, which is basically symptom screening. Of course, you want to continue to educate the healthcare personnel about TB. You also still want to have a facility risk assessment to make sure that you have policies and procedures in place in case you were to have a, a possible exposure at your facility or somebody um, that might have potentially infectious TB. Last but not least, we want to emphasize contact investigations. What are some useful documents and references for the essential steps? I'm gonna be sharing some forms. These examples come directly from the companion guide and they're available for your reference. These can be adapted to your institution's needs. So step one, baseline TB screening. TB screening is basically a, a TB risk assessment and a symptom evaluation. An example is Appendix 3. You can use your own document as well. Step two is baseline TB testing. This is where you would do the blood test or the skin test. And that's really for those that do not have a prior history of TB infection or TB disease. CDC has a lot of resources online. This is where you can go to and they have additional frequently asked questions as well. Here are some useful clinical resources. I really like this little uh, um, one pager, it folds up into into quarters, super useful. And then 
this uh, little booklet is also very useful as well. Not so breaking news, COVID vaccine and TB tests do not need to be spaced out in time. For more information, you can go to CDC's website. When are two-step TSTs required? Well, I'm going to refer you to box one of the 2005 MMWR. You basically want to have a really good baseline in case you do have an exposure at your facility, and that way you know whether people have converted from negative to positive. What if someone who is low risk for TB infection tests positive and higher? So if they've only had one test and it is positive, particularly if it's weekly positive, it is recommended to repeat the test. And if that is negative, to believe that it is negative. This will help um, improve the, the quality of the results that you receive. And you would look to see whether they are low risk based upon that first TB screening document. What about prior positives? Well, they should not be retested. Um, what they do need is the documentation they are free from the infectious TB. You want to encourage LTBI treatment if there's no history of prior treatment. If they have completed prior treatment, there's no reason to repeat. Um, you want to educate on signs and symptoms of TB disease um, to prompt an immediate evaluation between screenings. So you want to make sure that they start having you know, long-term cough, unintentional weight loss, um, that they are seen to make sure that it's not uh, potentially TB. Annual symptom evaluation is also recommended if LTBI treatment is not completed. For those that decline treatment, there is um, example, example optional um, documentation available, and that's Appendix 4. It may not be part of your occupational health and facility policies, so it may not be part of employee health records. Step three is the annual screening. It's basically a symptom screen. And there's an example for Appendix 7. Step four, annual TB education for the healthcare personnel. Um, here is uh, an example of documentation. If you want documentation, we also have online resources on education. Um, there's the TB 101 from CDC. And there's also some nice videos on LTBI that you could use and look forward to having um, some additional information on our website in the future. Step five, the facility risk assessment. This hasn't gone away. Um, unfortunately, the Pindex B of, of the 2005 MMWR was not updated. There is some recommendations for changing the wording and they're right here. We know it's a little bit clunky. And so in the future, we do plan to, to have some guides on our website to hopefully make it a little bit easier. Um, but feel free to put not applicable for sections that do not apply to your facility. And as you can see, uh, serial TST um, or IGRA is not recommended. So step six is the contact investigation. It's really important that you coordinate and your contact with your local health department if you think that you need to do a contact investigation at your facility. So for TB exposures in the facility, um, coordination and sharing of that data should be done directly with the local health department. They have example contact investigation forms and spreadsheets, um, and those are available upon request. And we greatly appreciate your partnership. If you have any questions, you can, you can go to our website. Um, you can also contact us directly at tb at azdhs.gov. And uh, you can go to um, this website here if you need to contact uh, licensing. Thank you very much for listening.